Hello and welcome to Sue Finley Designs. Today I'm in a different location. I'm down at the gallery at Whiteman Park, which is a couple of minutes down the road from me. I rent a little bit of wall space from here and all of the pieces that I make for the tutorials end up down here on display. So um, I'm down here today because I work here on a Friday and Saturday, well I volunteer here, um, there's five artists here and we each take it in turns to volunteer our time to um, keep the doors open. So today's video is coming from the gallery today. Now I'm a little bit delayed in getting this video tutorial to you because things didn't quite turn out according to plan and so and as the video progresses you'll see why. Those of you who have, uh, follow the um, Facebook group will see that um, the processes and things and where things I was not happy with it and what have you. So anyway, what I initially started out to do was to create these sparkly fish. Now these fish were created out of crushed glass from IKEA and then I created a mold, poured the resin, I poured the fish and away we went. Now initially the plan was to mount them on this piece, which is a slab of resin. Again, I poured, I created the mould and poured the resin and the fish were going to sit on top. But when I put the fish on top, I didn't like it, so I went on to plan B. So I then put stones on this one, so you can see the, the sparkly stones there. I then use an Ikea frame, cut a new backing board out of masonite and then put tape on the back, poured some white resin and then laid the slab on top to just make an independent art piece. So this has come down to the gallery today because this is going to go up on the wall. For the fish I decided that to pour another um, layer of resin, but this time a lot lighter. The darker resin just did not work, so I've poured um, just a metallic uh, teal with white. Again, using an IKEA frame, so just with a little flap on the back. So, um, and I've just made this like an independent piece where you can see the glitter, you can see the, the sparkle of the fish. So that's what this week's video is all about it's just about these fish the resin and yep yeah, and we'll see how we got on with that so without further ado let's get on with the video okay so for this video I started off with two pieces of foam board I printed off the design and then cut one of the foam boards and placed it on top of the other and then using painters tape I taped the um, the base so that it would be easy to remove the resin. Um, I'm also using Bombay ink for this plus the crushed glass from IKEA. Now in the resin I just used one drop of Bombay ink because I wanted a translucent look and then as you can see I just proceed to fill in the mold. Now I actually poured a bit too much um, here. I didn't need as much and once I realised when I was pouring the stones that I couldn't fill the area too much with stones, so or glass I should say. So what I'd done was I just poured an initial layer, allowed that to sink, then I leave the resin to cure for an hour before coming back and pouring another layer. So this was the first time I'd used the painter's tape in the mould and you'll see later on that I actually struggle to get it out and I end up damaging the mould trying to get the fish out. Now if you're not intending to use the mould again it's fine you can just use a screwdriver like I do just to prise the fish out but if you're planning to do several of these I would recommend using the plastic bag method where you use a spray adhesive and spray that the bag on instead um, because it's much easier to remove. You'll see that in, um, I use that met method for the base 
um, because I found that it's much easier to remove. So as you can see here, you know, I'm struggling to get this out. Um, I've tried, and because there's two boards stuck together, there was not a lot of movement, so I couldn't bend and flex it to get it to pop out either. So using a screwdriver was the best way of getting it out. And as you can see in the top corner of the mould there, it's actually got slightly damaged. But I'm not intending to do these fish again, so it doesn't matter on this occasion. So once we get these fish out, it's then on to tidying up the edges. And to do that, I just use the heat gun um, just to warm the resin slightly. And it just makes it easy to pick off the excess on the sides. Now, I tried using a knife um, on this, but because it's crushed glass and everything, the knife just wasn't working. So you're best just using your fingers to just pull it off. And because the stone, there is stones in the excess bit, it actually comes away really easily. So it's quite an easy task to tidy this all up. So I'll just go all the way around on all three fish and just tidy them up and give nice, nice neat edges around each one. So now onto the base layer. I'm using um, four colours in this Bombay ink, which is just one drop in the resin because I want a translucent look. Um, then we've got the Colour Obsession Teal, which again, just a small amount because we want it to look slightly translucent, so give the impression of water. Then we've got Colour Obsession Stormy Seas. Now this one's a paste, again, just using a small amount. And this, this is not going to be translucent because it's quite thick and dark, but this is going to show, be the base of the water. And then finally we're using Colour Obsession white again a small amount just mixed in the resin and as you can see on the mold this time i've used a plastic bag now this is the first time i've used a shiny plastic bag and it didn't go as flat as i would have liked so there's quite a few creases there but because the um, resin is five mil uh, sorry not resin the um, mold is five mil thick i thought well i'll just see how i get on with that i didn't want to re redo the bag but we'll just see how we get on so just place the dark blue at the bottom and then I'm slowly going to add the lighter colours going up because I want it to appear dark at the bottom and then light and translucent the closer it gets to the top. And now to zap the bubbles with my trusty little heat gun. I actually think it's on its way out now. It um, seems to dip in and out of power but I'll keep going until it dies and then I'll get myself a new one. And I'm just going to add some white in just so that when we come to blow the resin that we've got a little bit of added interest throughout the piece. And as you can see, I've just moved it around a little bit to make sure that the whole of the slab is covered. I didn't want to put too much in because I didn't want it overflowing because what we're going to do after is we're actually going to do a dome in effect of clear resin on the top to round off the edges that will be um, quite sharp on the edges when, when it's taken out of the mould. So I've not filled it right to the top at this stage. And I'm just using up the rest of the resin here, just adding a little bit of interest here and there. Now I hadn't realised that my camera had gone off, so once I realised that obviously I've just turned it back on. But you get the idea in what I'm doing here is I'm just pushing the resin up with the heat gun to give like a watery effect um, rising up from the bottom. So just going to move that round a bit with the, um, the heat gun. Now it's been an hour and I'm just giving it a uh, quick zap. As you can see the resin is no longer moving when I blow it so now I'm going to use a stick to drag it because it's still soft enough to move but obviously not enough 
for the heat gun to blow it so you get nice a nice effect happening here and it doesn't spread so you, it keeps the shape which is really good so you get like um, a flame effect which is quite effective Now you'll notice that if you've seen quite a few of my videos, I tend to leave the resin to cure for a good hour just so that I can move it in ways that I want it to move without it doing its own thing. And what you need to do here is just experiment with your own particular resin to see when the best time to play with it is and how long you've got until you can no longer play with it. So that's up to you to do a little bit of practicing. Once again, we just give it a quick zap with the heat gun. Now here's a close up of how that's looking. So, as you can see, pulling the resin through with a stick gives real, a real nice flame effect. And although this is supposed to look like water, I actually wanted it to have that feel as well. So, um, I'm quite happy with how this is looking so far. Well, this has been left overnight to cure, and it's now time to demold. And as you can see, it's much easier to demold with just lifting the plastic bag from the foam board. Now, you can see that the resin is still very uh, flexible and bendy. So you could actually, if you wanted to, go and bend this round a substrate of some description to create your own neat shapes um, or whatever you wanted to do with it. But for this one, I wanted it to be um, flat. Now here, um, I'm just testing out the fish to see how it looks on the slab of resin and I decided that it was too busy there was too much going on you lost the, the whole effect of the glitter um, fish so I then went on to plan B so for plan B I've now poured a layer of clear resin on the top and I want it to dome so I just spread it about with my fingers to the edge and then I'm slowly going to add more resin till it's doming at the edges but not overflowing on the side and once again zapping it with the heat gun to get rid of any bubbles Now it's advisable to walk around the whole piece um, because sometimes you can't see if it's gone to the edge if you're looking from certain angles so if you just go around just inspect the piece and just make sure that the resin goes all the way to the edge on all four edges and then once again just give that a zap with the heat gun so once again this has been left for the usual one hour so now I'm adding the stones. Now on this occasion I've left it for an hour because I didn't want the resin to overflow on the sides when I added stones. So now because it's domed on the top, me adding the stones is not going to cause it to flow over the edge. So that's the reason for me leaving it for an hour on this occasion. And then what I'm doing here is I'm just following the lines and the shapes with the stones just to give a little bit of added interest. Well, you know how I like to use these stones. Now, these are the same stones that I use regularly. These are the um, diamond acrylic gems, sometimes called decoration fillers. Some of them call them crystal gems. They Different shops have different names, them, but they are predominantly the same thing. And they come in different sizes. And they are, like I say, in the shape of a diamond and they're quite effective at bouncing light around the room so you get like quite a nice effect happening. And again, it's an idea to walk around your piece just to see how the light does bounce off the gems because you may see from a different angle that it may need a little more in certain places. Um, I realized when I walked around that it actually needed more down the bottom so I applied more stones around the bottom and I'll do that I'll just keep going around and just check in the piece to see where the stones need to be added so this is it the piece has been curing overnight and now it's time to add the frame now what I should have done with this is I should have left it to cure for much longer before doing this but because I was already running late 
with the tutorial I went ahead and moved on to the next stage so ideally I would leave this for a good week before you actually go onto the process of framing so for this frame I'm just using a frame from Ikea I've removed the back and cut a piece of masonite board to fit the back because what happens with the masonite board it has a little corner piece that's been cut away for easy removal so all I do is I just cut a new board for that and it just makes it easier for when I'm applying the resin and I'm just going to tape the edges now so that any resin that leaks through from the front doesn't then pour onto the bottom of the frame but having said that, if it does pour onto the frame, I've found with the IKEA frames, the resin doesn't stick, stick to it because it's a plastic. So it's quite easy to remove just a, a little bit of heat and it comes right off there. So that's not going to be an issue. This just keeps it a little bit tidier when you're pouring. So once that's done, I'm just going to use the mat board that came with the frame to use a pencil just to mark um where the slab of resin is going to be now those dots are actually slightly inside the resin so they're not it's not going to be visible when it's placed but it's just a good way of marking and you are, although you can just about see them through the resin it's no one else is going to see it because once the slab is on there you can't see it so what i've done here is i've just mixed a little bit of white uh, color obsession white snow white paste to the resin and it's just going to be uh, a very plain white colour and I'm just going to spread that about before laying the slab on. Now I'm just using a simple spreader that I got from a local Bunnings store. I use this quite regularly because it's got like a tooth, um, serrated tooth shape it means you can spread the resin about without dragging it about too much and you get a nice even um, finish and using the heat gun that'll zap any bubbles and help move the resin round so that it's um, you get a nice finish on there So although you can't see the little dots that are placed before, I can just about see them through the resin so that shows me where I need to place this. Now I could, I should have really left this for um, you know, half an hour, not as much as an hour but um, before placing this in here because what happens is when you place the slab on it actually has a tendency to move quite easy. So you've got to watch it, uh, just make sure that it's not moving around too much. And what I'm doing here is I'm placing on some stones just to weight it down. Now the reason I should have left this for a week is that I found that after I took this off I actually ended up with some indentations in the resin which I'm now going to have to fix with another coat of resin on the top. Which is not a problem but it just means using more resin. So now we're on to the second part of plan B which is to frame the fish. So this one, I'm actually not going to go with a plain white. I'm actually going to go with a very pale, translucent looking um, background. Now I'm using metallic blue and white and I'm just going to spread this about to give like a watery effect. Now unfortunately, I'd not realised that the camera had gone off again. Um, this time, I'd run out of memory space and I had to go away empty the camera and come back but you get the idea I just use my fingers to move the watery bit around so you've got like a nice effect so this I actually left for an hour before placing the the fish on because I didn't want it swimming about as much as the other one but it did actually still move uh, quite a bit it did slide about a bit so it perhaps could have been left a lot longer before putting the fish on and again what I'll do with this one is I'll just put the stones on top just to weight it down so they don't move. So that's it for this week. So I ended up with two framed resin pieces as opposed to the one because I changed my mind halfway through. And that's the beauty of this is that if something's not working, you can come up with a plan B. So that's what I did. Well, as always, I hope this has given you some inspiration to create your own pieces, whether it be 
um, crushed glass fish or if you made a heart or whatever you can use the same technique and um, I hope it's given you some ideas for some new pieces for your home. Well that's it for today, um, thank you um, and goodbye until next time.